Bunk Mates. Welcome back to another Percy Jackson TV show review. I'm reviewing episode three, and I only have two pages of notes this time. This time, which is much better. Or so, because last time I think I had about like. I basically had three and a half pages of notes, so it's decrease, and that was for two episodes, so it's decreasing, which is good, but, or who knows, maybe that notes will be the regular amount of notes I take each episode, now that there's no two season, two episode season premiere, here, so yeah, um, I am gonna do things a little bit differently than how I did it from the last time. I'm just more so going to go over my notes, explain some sort of class I had, then give it a full in-depth, here's what happened, blah blah blah, sort of thing. Thing and see if that's better. And for those of you who are new to the channel and never seen this before, before or didn't see my last review, um, I am going to be spoiling the book, book and what, it's not spoiling the book, sorry, I am going to be explaining certain things that happened in the book, sort of again, spoilers into that, so if you haven't read the book and don't want spoilers, then this is your warning, click away now, this video is not going anywhere unless YouTube uh, takes it down themselves, I'm not going to delete it it but I don't think they're going to either but you have been warned so that being said we into spoilers so we start off right the bat with the Oracle oh and we just and as he's going for the attic I'm like I didn't catch all we have a bunch of different things I definitely want to go frame by frame to see Oh, here's a reference to that. Here's that sort of thing of like, and like sort of pausing so that way I notice details I didn't see on the first watch because there's a lot of things in there and I know for a fact me just viewing it normally I did not catch at all. Oh, and then, um, I originally had had in my notes why can't we have gone the whole prophecy when we start seeing the prophecy as just Gabe? Originally in the books it was Gabe and his poker friends, but sorry. I feel like I had something on my mouth. But since he's played online poker now, we're not having him do that, so it's just Gabe, which is fine. We don't need to worry about it whatsoever. So ever, and then, of course, there's a, because they only did the first two lines of the prophecy. Hey, so I was like, why are they only giving us the first two lines of the prophecy? And then I find out, oh, they just cut away from it, and then they continue doing the full prophecy. These sort of things. Thing. Now, normally in the books, the oracle is mummified and, and whatnot. Not as a mummy, but um, I think they just did... I don't know if the reason why they made a person is because they didn't want to have to do more CGI. Because they're relying on more practical effects. Not entirely sure about that but it is what it is you know so so I'm that's not a big detail I just am curious what made them decide to change it and honestly if like it was we don't want to do that much CGI or I think it was one of those well or if there's one of the things where since Rick has introduced Egyptian things he wouldn't have made the Oracle mummified since that's more Egyptian. And at the time when Ryan that he hadn't thought about doing Egyptian mythology at all. 
And I don't know who's to say they, I don't really care, but just, um, stuff I was curious about, it wasn't actually in my notes, but, um, um, I also love the green, green smoke that they did that told the prophecy very true to how the oracle works in the books. It's great. Oh yeah, I did write my notes. Never mind, weird that they cut it, but I guess they want to make you think it's Grover. Or who will, of course, betray Percy as part of the you shall be betrayed by one who calls you friend. They really seem to be... This episode I noticed a lot. They really seem to be trying to drive the oh, who's going to betray you? Sort of thing. Thing. Um, I love the shoe design of the flying shoes, how the wings transform into the laces. It's really good. good. I love how Percy sets in Thalia already, and we haven't even gotten her. Her. Yet. Yet. Like, he's already saying, she met a pinecomb's fate. Which is a. I guarantee that's a reference to. To, or is going to foreshadow if they ever get a season three in Titans Curse where it's like, bring on Pinecone Face. It's gr I'm here for it. We're getting more of uh, Percy being sassy in this, which is great because I didn't feel like he was being sassy very much. Much like being. He also got, felt more funny in this episode, which I didn't really feel was happening in the past two episodes like funny things were happening around him but i didn't feel like percy himself was too funny eh, but oh uh, maybe that was just something where i'd have to go back and watch the episodes and i'd find them more funny i don't know no um i love how Beth is as and Percy are bickering already about who's in charge. It's great. Great for the quest. Quest. Um, still no. I put still no fates, which is interesting because the fates were supposed to appear and cut string. String, which was supposed to be foreshadowing um, the main the main henchman to the main villain of the book, Luke, who dives, who sacrifices himself so that way Cronus can return after he goes, oops, I made a mistake. Make sort of thing, but maybe they're just cutting that out because they think that that's, kind of, that will cause too much confusing if we foreshadow this and then no one dies. Which is fine. Honestly, the fates aren't really a big deal. I honestly don't care or care about it, but but as a fan fan of the books, it's just something where I was noting, okay, they're not doing the fates. I feel if I didn't mention the fates, uh, people wouldn't be too happy with the or it would be like, why didn't you mention the fates sort of thing? So I feel like I kind of have to, I'm kind of obligated to mention that. Um, um, and then I love how we see Grover trying to use his woodland magic and failing that when he's trying to do a, con I think he said a consensus song or something to where, to where basically they can, Annabeth and Percy can try being more friendly to each other, and it, both of them look at, at him like he's weird. You know what? Not, and then I put, and then we have the scene where Annabeth notices the fates, fates, and realizes that they're here, here, and instead of just going to warn. Percy and Grover that, hey, the fates are here. Here. She instead goes and talks to them. Uh, mention, oh, I'm not... Talks to 
to them and where, like, Athena's supposed to be smart. Why would you alert your enemies to your presence? Because unless they, this is in a deleted scene, the, it's not like the fates said, hey, it's not like the fates gave her any hint of, hey, come and talk to us, sort of thing, thing, or, or oh, we want to talk to you, you don't want to, she just went up and talked to them, because there's no way she had any sort of deal Knew they were going to try and make a deal with her and take care of them out. As far as she knew, at the time, they were here to kill them. Um, and there's that. And I know, like, she's grown. She's not the same girl anymore, which they have her say exactly to the Furies. Furies, but, like, still, you think she'd at least be cautious around them and not be reckless and confront them when she knows, oh yeah, you can kill. And I also put underneath that, why let them know, oh, you know, unless they really want you to, to, um, suspect of, uh, like, being the traitor or whatnot, like, to doubt if Annabeth, like, if Annabeth's gonna be the one that betrays, because they really seem to be leaning on that heavily. And then, of course, um, they flee the bus after killing Alexa's sister, who is Mrs. Dodds. Dodds, and then, um, I also, as they were doing this, I noticed that Grover has to go on the shoes, but also I was like, when is Grover getting the shoes? Because he's the one that's supposed to have them, not Percy. Yeah, you know, for, because Percy can't use the shoes because if he uses them, Zeus is probably going to get angry at him and strike him from the sky, so he just gives them to Grover. So I was like, here buddy, have a magical item! And the sort of companion thing. And then I put in my notes, too bad they can't give the heroes more time to reveal who the monsters are, and then be... And then as I was recording before I was recording this, I've had time to marinate for about a day since I watched it, and I realized the reason why they're probably not taking as long to reveal the monsters is because they have a limited runtime, that sort of thing. So they need, so with the monsters, I realized, okay, they can figure out who the monsters are more quicker than normal. Well, that's all right. I'm not. That was originally something I was complaining about, but then I realized, yeah, we kind of need to know the stakes with the monsters. There is a film in a time we have right away. Oh, Mr. D, I'm so annoyed that Percy. Not, I don't, Miss, F Percy found out who Mr. D is, they still could have let Percy figure that out on his own instead of Grover telling him, but I think it shows that Grover's concerned for his friend still, so it's not a big deal. No, but yeah, um, and then of course, and this was of course to them, going to Auntie M's Garden Gnome Emporium, um, where they realize, oh, this is the home of Medusa, sort of thing, and leads into my next note, where I knew they were going to make Medusa more sympathetic, but why make her no Sally? Like, you can have, like, when would Sally have had the time to meet Medusa? Uh, or how did they to meet? Because Sally is in New York. And, uh, like, why would those two have met unless Medusa was in New York and then she moved to New Jersey? Be like... But that what? But unless uh, Grover's uncle, Fer but that doesn't exactly work unless Grover's uncle Ferdinand then left sometime after Percy was born. Or so like, 
don't know. I I know they've said that I still think they shouldn't have had Sally or Medusa meet at all. But that's just me. Alright, um, so, yeah, also, I realized, also, I realized that Grover is just, well, it was in the red, oh, Percy just handed Grover the box, oh, it's just we're like, oh, yeah, here, keep this for safe, keep him while I go in, sort of thing, and then, as a result, Grover just keeps them and then decides to put them on his own without Percy giving to him. I mean, I'm not upset. I mean, Grover's at least got them. Well, would have shared a nice moment of camaraderie. Three of Percy giving Grover the shoes. Shoes. This way is fine. It's not a big deal. Yeah, and then, um, oh, right, and then they turn elect, after they cut Medusa's head off, which, which they turn Medusa, which during that fight, um, um, I put Grover isn't there because he activated the shoes too soon and he can't control them. I wish he had gotten one lucky hit, so that way, way, um, you kind of, for those who haven't seen it, you kind of wonder, oh, was that just luck? Luck? Was Grover just lucky that one time, or does he actually have some skill, whereas we know, we who read the books, that was the intent of the books, where he, he attacks their wall blind. But still manages to get hit. Sorry. Also, if my microphone sounds weird right now, um, the audio was off. I have no idea where I left off, so I'm just going to um do some repeating. So, um, Grummer doesn't get. Doesn't get a hit on Medusa, which I wish he had gotten at least one before he collapses because he activates the, the reason why he doesn't get that is because he activates the shoes early. Well, in the book, he is able to distract Medusa enough so that Percy can get the kill. I wish that Grover had contributed some meaningful way to let Percy get the kill. I think that really would have contributed well. And then... Once they cut the head off after Athena puts her visibility cap on it, it's so that way Percy can look, look and kill her. Or, um, they use it on Electo. Oh, and I really wish that they did it because, and they had killed her some other way because it feels like. Because she is a statue, she shouldn't be able to reform form and come back. And she needs to come back to find out that Ares had the helm and the lightning bolt, not Percy. You know, she can tell Hades this and that way his mom can get released. And so it is very worrying. So, and there are three Furies. One is dead. Uh, so, are they just going to use the other two Furies and have those be there and she's absent? Or are they on a cop out? That's kind of concerning. And then, of course, they get the end where they send off the head of Medusa and to be friends, Percy sings. The son that Grover was trying to sing with the others in the beginning of the episode at the end. And it just shows how much of friendship he has. We also have Percy on I Am Persecuty, which if you were 
Which, in the book, yes, I agree with. However, it is not, you're not entirely that way, Percy, in the show. Like, if you were that way, you wouldn't have bowed down easily to Reese like you did. In episode two, <clears throat> which, yeah. Yeah, and then, um, at the end, we see her, they mention her as Zora Express, and we see him carrying the packages up the elevators of the Empire State Building to Olympus, with him saying, hey, you guys will never guess what's in here, so, oh, I'm one knowing if the reason why we see Hermes be in a later episode because the trailer did show that happening. If I'm wondering if that's the reason why by um Hermes is gonna show up, he'll deliver the head of Medusa back to Percy. And I don't know. I am a little bit worried with him. If that was the only bit of him, that would that we see of Hermes, that would have been cool. But I am really worried that we're gonna see him in later episodes. So we'll see. Who knows? Maybe it will be good, but I'm still worried. But until next time, I will see you all later. Bye.